to present Haley with her Hall of Fame plaque, 2010 inductee, Angela James. Thanks, AJ, and thanks, everyone. That's very fitting because uh, Angela was my my first line mate when I was 15 years old. She was the superstar and my, my centerman, and all she said to me was, Rook, just get me the puck and everything will be okay. <laughs> so uh, thanks, AJ, for being here. Um, this is a great, obviously a great honour. I'd like to thank the Hockey Hall of Fame, Kelly Craig. The staff at the Hall of Fame has followed the women's game for a long time, always being there to collect stuff from us through the years. And it really means a lot to have women included here as the seventh woman going in tonight. I'm also going in with some incredible hockey players, none of which I can say that I played with or was coached by. Um, but over the last few days, um, I've got a chance to meet and get to know these guys a little bit. And a tremendous respect. Uh, Jimmy, I uh, was talking to Sid the other day and I was asking a little bit about you and the words class, humor and respect is what Sid talked about and that's what I've seen from you uh, since I've been able to meet you. And Guy is a right-handed centerman. I was a right-handed centerman. I watched you play against my beloved Oilers. I learned how to take face-offs and I watched you block shots and you taught me a lot about the game. Sergey, I sometimes quarterback the power play with the national team and you were the guy that I watched to learn about that. Jerry, uh, you're kind of the enemy there with the, on the American side. <laughs> but I have to say that you staying back to coach your team the last two days and then come join us at the Hall of Fame is uh, it's the kind of coach that I would want. And the dedication that you've had to the game all these years is incredible. And Vatslav, my son is Czech. I trained for 10 years in the Czech Republic in the summer times. And I can't imagine what it would have been like uh, at that time to leave that country and to come to Canada. And I know when you were up here, you forgot some very, very special people that you would like to thank, the woman that has been by your side and fled with you all those years ago. So why don't you come up here and have a few words? <laughs> This is unusual, I'm so sorry. I show that my, my mind is only capable like my body. I thought it was going to be better, but again, I forgot a couple of things. One, I would like to thank you all my friends, uh, players which I played for in Czechoslovakia, all players from the national team all those years. They were great friends, great players. And uh, I'm just ashamed I didn't mention that before, but even more, I feel so sorry I didn't do that. It is on my list. My beautiful wife, Marcella, she's here for, for me and she's helping me in my life all the time. And I'm so sorry. I hope I'm going to get dinner tonight when I come back home. <laughs> I'm telling you that any chance I have, I love you and I appreciate everything you've done for me. I also would like to say I have three kids. Older son, Vashi, he lives in Los Angeles. My daughter, she lives and works in Hawaii. And my second daughter, she, is, she works and lives in Portland, Oregon. I love you guys. Sorry that your daddy is dumb. <laughs> okay, all is right in the world tonight, so there we go. <laughs> Um, I was uh, having dinner with Brendan Shanahan a, a few months ago and we were lamenting about our, our losses in the 98 Olympics, re-watching his shootout miss and our uh, abysmal performance with Canada. Um, and I was, you know, he said, do you have your speech ready yet? And I, I said, no, I have no idea what to say. And he said, well, you know, if I'm sitting in the crowd, what I'd want to know is like, how did it all happen? And so I thought I'd tell you the story of how it all happened for me. Uh, as a kid growing up in Saskatchewan, I idolized the Oilers of the 80s. 99 and 11, Wayne, Andy, Kevin, Yuri, they don't even need last names, everybody knows who you are. You were my heroes, you were who I went on the outdoor rink to be like, and you influenced my life more than you will ever know. My mom and dad, Tom and Marilyn, 
who were school teachers in our little town. And it was not a common thing as a little girl to want to play hockey in a small town where I came from. But my mom and dad believed that a girl could do anything that a boy could do. And they said yes when I said, could I play? My dad coached and he taught us the game. And my mom fought. She fought for the right not only for me to play the game, but for hundreds of other girls starting leagues when we were in Saskatchewan and later we moved to Alberta. So I want to say thanks to them. I have a younger brother, Ross, and my sister Jane, who's with me tonight. My brother didn't come because he's actually back home in Calgary helping to run my hockey festival while I'm here uh, doing this thing. So it was always a family affair, and I dedicate uh, tonight to you guys. I know, Mom and Dad, that I couldn't retire you or pay your house off. And every four years, for 20 years, you went into debt while we went to the Olympic Games. Um, but tonight, maybe this is just a little something that uh, We'll top it all off, and thank you for all the support. I grew up in a little town in Shaunavon, Saskatchewan, and, and it really did take a village to raise me. Uh, my mom and dad were there, but there were so many people in my community um, when it wasn't maybe popular or the right thing to let a girl play hockey who said, forget it, we're going to put her on the ice and let her play. And in the prairies, there was a lot of travel, cold winters and bus rides. I spent a lot of time on the bus. And just like in my community, when the village of my community propped me up, when the tragedies of the Swift Current Broncos bus crash, which happened an hour away from where I grew up, and just a few years ago, the Humboldt bus crash happened, like never before did you see small town and the rest of Canada rise up to help these people out of the tragedies um, that we experienced in, in those two situations. It was a village that pulled everyone through in the hockey community and I think in the country in the most profound ways. And I just want to say that I'm forever grateful and that those two incidents and all the people involved will forever be in my heart, forever. I wanted to play the game so bad I didn't care what I had to endure. And looking back as a little girl at that time, it was a lot. I remember one time I went to a hockey school in Regina, Saskatchewan, and I was the only girl at the school and they let me come to the hockey school but there was no place for me to sleep because it was just for boys as a boarding school. And, but they did have one little room in the Regina Agrodome, and it was an usher's closet. And they said, if you want to stay here, you can stay, but you'll have to stay in the closet. And so my brother felt sorry for me, and so he and I jammed ourselves into this closet and slept there for a week so I could go to the hockey school. As I got a little older, I played Bantam AAA. I started to be good, and I was taking a spot of another boy, and people didn't really like that too much. And I remember I actually developed an ulcer um, because I wasn't nervous to get hit or to, to go on the ice. That's actually where I, was, I felt good. It was when I had to come to the rink and change in the bathroom and then walk through the lobby of all the parents and the comments and the harassment that I would often hear. But all of those things gave me thick skin and resilience, and they taught me not to listen to the critical opinion of other. And when I joined the national team at 15, I was welcomed and greeted by women who were twice my age and had so much more life experience than I did, and it was an incredible experience for me. I have to thank Hockey Canada for 23 years. I had a platform. We all had a platform which to rise up and to represent the women's game, to go to the Olympics and to keep propelling the sport forward. And I never felt once that I went to an Olympics that we didn't have all that we needed to be successful. My life was really shaped by a lot of those women early on. I remember my first roommate, Margot Page, was a grade 10 math teacher, and I was a grade 10 math student. <laughs> feel bad for a 15-year-old roommate, not so much fun for her. Um, but what I learned from those women is they gave up their careers they fought for relevance, and instead of asking what the game could give them, they asked what they could give the game, and they changed my life forever. Uh, 23 years, it is a long time to play on one team, and I had a ton of great experiences with the players that I played with and the teammates that I played with, but there was a group of people off the ice that really pushed me day in and day out, and I think made me as competitive as I became. And I'd like to thank tonight Sil Corbett, Andy O'Brien, Daryl Belfry, Kelsey Andrews, James Gattinger, Martin Jelena, and Andrew Ferentz for pushing me to limits that I never thought I could ever achieve. 
The first Olympics that we lost was not a fun one, but the four after that that we went on to win gold were some of the best experiences in my life that I'll hold very dear to my heart. And one of the greatest honours that I've ever had is to put on that Canadian jersey and to play for all of you, to play for the country. It is really, truly the greatest honour in my life. I think it's one thing to be the best in the world, but it's completely another thing to be the best for the world. And I can really, truly say that for the majority of my career, players, the coaches and the staffs that I had a chance to be around were both of those. And playing for Canada offers you a very special opportunity to have that. Throughout all the hockey and all the ups and downs, there's been one constant in my career throughout my whole life. He's seen most of my hockey career. I don't know if he remembers it all, but it's my son, Noah. And <laughs> I love you too, bud. And I know you, you, don't, you never liked hockey, and even yesterday at the Legends game, you bought a, a good book just in case you got bored. Um, but I know that neither of us can deny that hockey's given us everything that we have in our lives. And isn't it ironic, in 2013 you had the chance when we went to that World Championships and it was your birthday because I missed most of your birthdays for the World Championships. But that one, the Canadian Special Forces guys brought you to shoot C7s on the range and it changed the course of your life. I ended up wearing the maple leaf and today you wear another kind of maple leaf, a flag on your chest representing Canada's military and I'm very, very proud of you for what you've done. I'm, uh, as Jerry said, I'm grateful for all that hockey's given me. It's given me everything that I have in my life. I'm grateful that in 1998, my dear friend Bob Clark believed enough in me to bring me to the Flyers camps, 98 and 99, and give me a chance to become a better hockey player because he looked at me as just a hockey player. It had no doubt given me the opportunity a few years later to go and have a career playing men's hockey overseas. In my time in Europe, I really gained a true love and respect for the game overseas and the players, the quality and the style of players that the game has produced. I'm also grateful to the Toronto Maple Leafs, to Kyle and Brendan and the development staff that I work with every day. Um, for hiring me not because I was a woman, but because they think I'm good enough to help their hockey team. And I think we have come a long way in hockey. Uh, this week, uh, in fact, this weekend marks the 10th year of the Canadian Tire Wickfest, which is my hockey festival. In, and in those 10 years, we've worked with 30,000 young female players from around the world. I love the game, I love the grassroots, and I love trying to develop the game around the world because that's what the women's game needs. I'd like to thank three people that have stuck with me for 18 years in my dream to develop this game. Kaylee Price, Rob Price, and Dadan Kuzmarov, who were there, believed in this project when not a lot of others did. But mostly I'm proud today to stand in front of all of you and to say that my little nieces, Bryn and Addie, who are five and six years old here today, if they decide to play hockey, that they can walk into a hockey rink anywhere in Canada with a hockey bag and a hockey stick over their shoulder and nobody's going to look twice. They don't have to cut their hair short and run into the bathroom and try to look like a boy that I'd, like I had to do to blend in. The road is just a little bit easier. So I want to thank everyone that made that road easier for me and is continuing to pave the way. And it's an honour to be here tonight. The game is truly for everyone. Thank you.